Day 30. There is no day 29 because I didn't record yesterday, so not much happened in between. I was just waiting for the water to recede through evaporation and transpiration. So for the old guard, things don't look good. Um, that initial batch that I sprayed with isopropanol, you know, they're pretty much all defective or dying because I think their stem root junctures are narrowed for whatever chemical, you know, physical reason there was and they just can't get enough water and uh, likewise transport nutrients down to the root system. This plant, however, has hung on and its cotyledons are further continuing to erode or die and the first true leaf has done well, although I expected it to get bigger. And then there's the second true leaf. Um, it's kind of hard to focus on here, but it's small and it hasn't really unfolded yet. It looks to be fine. It's not dying, but it's not doing great either. So I don't know if this plant is in some kind of stasis or is it suffering because I watered the whole thing way too much. This seedling is one of the up-and-comers. I'm referring to the one in front. Um, but there is a little problem with its uh, the edges of some of the leaves. It just kind of looks like there's some kind of rot going on, um, especially for the first true leaf. Likewise, here's an example of a plant that's not doing too well. This is part of the old guard too. And I thought that little white you know, part um, right here, that would turn into uh, part of the cotyledon, but apparently not. It's just staying white. Um, and there's a little activity. I think the true leaf, the first one is dead. The one that's, um, let me see. Yeah, right here. Um, it's basically withered away. On the other side, you have these. And they're not doing too well either. I mean, they're just not really growing. So I think this plant might suffer from the same fate. So I don't know if you remember this, but this is the very first seed husk uh, of the first plant that germinated. And as you can see, the plant itself is basically dying and rotting away, but uh, there's something coming out of the seed husk itself. I thought everything that, you know, there was a second plant in there and that was dead, but it looks like for the top half, there's a little greenish discoloration. Um, there could be a pair of cotyledons inside, although this root system is facing the wrong way, so it's unlikely it's going to find water. So I thought there would be no more mold problems with all that Lysol, you know, and when I last watered, I smelled that lemony scent wafting out of the soil. So I thought there would be no possibility of additional mold, but here we are with a sodden seed with some mold on it. So if you look elsewhere, you know, the last watering was sort of like a flood. It helped some plants, uh, otherwise it did just kind of push them down into the wet soil. So now everything's in the process of recovering. Um, definitely too much water is not a good thing because the soil has no drainage. So this is one of those plants that was turned upside down. I think the cotyledons are probably just going to rot because it's so wet in there. And the root system doesn't look like it's found its way into the soil. So I, th I think this little plant is doomed. There's definitely new growth all around. So. I face a very critical decision at this point. Should I expose this thing to natural sunlight? I don't know if this one little lamp is going to cut it. It seems very bright and it was true that when I first started this experiment in mid-January a month ago, the sun was just so dim that this lamp focused on this little glass pot here was indeed much brighter than the sun. but. Now it's mid-February and I think there's a lot more sun coming in the afternoons and might only be, you know, two hours of quality sun a day at this angle and the position, but um, I'm wondering if that might be critical to the development of these plants, you know. The other thing is, is it important to have UV to help kill mold and, uh, you know, maybe shed these seed husks or is it important just to have you know, enough powerful sunlight to help evaporate water off the soil surface and also kill mold that way. I just made a new strategic decision. So at nights, I'm basically, when I come home, I'm gonna put this lamp directly over these four plants. And this is the one with the uh, largest uh, first true leaf. 
and you can hardly see anything because it's so close now so there's a lot of glare but to the human eye you know everything is uh, green and uh, looks fine but anyway I used to have it on this plastic um, chest basically so what that would do is you know I would just point this light so that almost everything can get plenty of light um, such as this one which is now dying and some of the vegetation over here but what happens is you know if I increase the distance from this light to the surface of the soil by almost double so what that does is essentially just by physics you know optics um, that lessens the amount of light that reaches the soil or these plants by about fourfold so when you double the distance um, the light is spread over a much greater area four times as much so the intensity decreases by four times so essentially after the first few days you know I had the lamp let me demonstrate let's say I had it right here and then you know one of the seedlings grew all the way up to here its leaf was basically touching this bulb inside so that leaf was hogging up most of the sunlight and also it was doing the best and basically I wanted to give all the other plants a chance so I raised this lamp up so that could have been a critical mistake because um, that means that none of them get enough light essentially so I'd rather have some plants do well than none but you know I think you know one thing I could do is have the lamp shine down one half of the side of the bowl to provide for these plants and then when I come home uh, I shine on these and the reason I don't let this light shine continuously 24 hours a day you know 365 days a year um, is because I've read previously that plants have a circadian rhythm you know it's genetic just like animals do and if you keep them under continuous light everything dies so that's kind of trippy how that works but um, I don't want that to happen either so obviously um, at, two, at this juncture it's too late to save every plant in here especially with the watering you know I could have killed some of these with excess watering too but I hope that with this move I can you know observe some tangible growth in these four plants here and if that's the case by you know tomorrow or within 24 hours then I'll know this was the right strategic decision to make I'm gonna take some measurements so I can see if there's any growth within 24 hours so this is the most well-developed true leaf and I really don't like using the British Imperial system to measure things but I don't have a tape measure that goes in centimeters so anyway this is about 13 sixteenths of an inch and let's see this is about 15 sixteenths of an inch long so we'll see if there's any growth by tomorrow